Wait, wait, wait. Let me get this straight. You remember your fight with Brooklyn when we were in high school taking place in a WWE arena with a ring sold out crowd and commentators? The guy who can't remember the safe combination is questioning my memory? No, the guy who can't remember the safe combination is questioning your sanity. Whatever. I may have taken a few liberties with my story, but that is how I choose to remember it. Well, as much as I'd love to join you in rewriting history, that day is scorched into my brain because that's how I got my nickname, Trey. This is how it really went down. Get my own action figure, become WWE Divas Champion. Is this some kind of WWE nerd vision board? Hey, being immortalized in semi-posable plastic is the greatest thing a human being can achieve. Don't ever touch our stuff again. What, like this? That was a huge mistake. Oh no, I've unleashed Hot Head Red. I'm gonna take that marker, bring it to your grandmother's nursing home and cross out parts of her chart so when the nurse goes to give her turndown service, she won't know to flip her over. That's right, I'm gonna give your grandmother bed sores. What is wrong with you? Calm down, deep breaths, maybe we can talk this out. I'm done talking. This is what happens when you mess with the captain of the wrestling team. What are you gonna do? Hit me with a steel chair? Put me through a table? I'm going to get help. Everyone already knows Hothead Red, but let me introduce you to her best friend, Trey. Get it? Because he busted his butt on a lunch tray. Now her face matches her nickname. That could have been way worse. Yeah. Brooklyn could have posted a video of the whole thing online. Oh wait, that's exactly what she did. I meant she could have dumped something worse on me, like mayo or hot sauce. And hey, at least she didn't destroy our list. So what? I'm not gonna do any of those things anyway. What do you mean? We were just embarrassed in front of the entire school, and currently 672 people on the internet. I bet a bunch of those are repeat views. Great! We're not even touching on the fact that I got beat up by a lunch tray. I'm never going to be a WWE superstar. I'll just go to college and get a lame job like my parents want me to. <sighs> I think you need to read the letter again. See? This is what I'm talking about. I can't even open my locker. What's your combination? 16339, I think. Letter, please. Here we go. I think this section is relevant right now. You've probably asked yourself a million times, why? Why didn't they want to be my parents? The truth is we did, but we had to make the hardest decision of our lives because we didn't feel we could give you the life you deserved. And that life is one where you can have the freedom to follow your dreams no matter what they might be, to become anything you want. Using the only letter I have from my real parents as some sort of motivational speech is kind of a cheap move. They're right, though. You got a second chance in life, and you need to make the most of it. So why sell yourself short? You need to at least try. 
Fine. But when this whole WWE thing doesn't work out, I'm blaming you. It'll work out. I promise. Assuming you never have to wrestle a lunch tray. They're actually a lot tougher than they look. Okay, so maybe my memory of that day is a little off. Severe emotional trauma will do that. But did I really say all that stuff about her grandmother? Yep. You had some serious rage issues back then. Did you also forget that's how you got your nickname because you were always seeing red? No, I remember. And then Brooklyn tacked on the hot head part. <laughs> Gotta give her credit for that. You know, the rhyming definitely made it catchier. Hot head red, hot head red, hot head red. Okay, okay, we get it. Have you figured out that's safe yet? <sighs> no, but I'm pretty sure I use the same combination I've always used for everything, which is... Got it. Finally. Was never in doubt. I'm sorry you were locked in there all alone for so long. Mommy won't ever let that happen again. There's something seriously wrong with you. You're just jealous. We should get going. We can't be late. Hey, we got a message from President Johnson. Do you think you impressed the most electrifying president in United States history with all your career achievements? Actually, you do. All the best on your big day. I'll be watching from the People's White House. That's cool. <laughs> but I, I voted for Kane. Hey, it's X-Pac. Just keep walking, we don't have time. We always have time for X-Pac. Besides, you can't just ignore a WWE Hall of Famer. I can. Trey. Pac, what's going on? Hey guys, looking good. You too. Thanks, I'm on this new mustard only diet. As in mustard is the only condiment you use? No, as in I only eat mustard. I've already dropped like seven pounds. That's... Interesting. But enough about me. This is your big night. I swear it was just like yesterday when I first saw you two on the indie scene. Yeah, at that point we were only a couple years in. And I was about 30 years in. But I could still go today if I had to. I'm telling you, this diet's legit. I guess you could say you can cut the mustard, huh? Anyway, we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you. So, thanks. I'm sure you'd have been fine with it without my help. Trey, I don't think I can say the same for you. You were kind of the drizzling craps back then, no offense. No, it's true. And I wasn't just a drizzle. I was more like a torrential downpour of crap. Red was always ahead of me from the moment we started training.
You can use this credit card for whatever you need, but we keep the reward points. I'm about 10,000 short of a free trip to someplace warm, and you're gonna help me get there. Deal? Got it. We are gonna miss oh. you so much. When did you get there? I just had to be close to you one more time. It, it feels like yesterday we got that call, there was a boy in Denver who was ready to be adopted, and now you're all grown up and going off to college. I, I, I just can't believe it. <laughs> I know. It's hard for me to believe, too. We'll come visit soon, okay? No, don't. I mean, a, a big part of college is learning independence, and if you're visiting all the time, then I'll never be able to do that. Just be smart about the credit card, okay? Like, if there's a big keg party, put it all on the card and have everyone pay you back in cash. That way, I'll be headed for that free beach trip in no time. Hey, maybe we could go on spring break together. Frank? I have to go. Okay, drive safe. This is the part where you get out of the car. <laughs> right. Call us when you get to school. We love you, Denver! Do you believe this? We're finally doing it. Our very first list item. Train at the dungeon. Are you excited as I am? I don't think that's possible considering you've already had three energy drinks before we've even left town. <laughs> but this is gonna be cool. I know. Think about how many top superstars came through Calgary. The Hearts, Edge, Jake the Snake Roberts, Rowdy Roddy Piper, and we're next. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We have a long way to go before we can be mentioned in the same sentence as those legends. Everyone has to start somewhere though, right? And the dungeon is a great place to start. I still can't believe your parents were okay with all this. What happened to them wanting you to go to college? They changed their minds. Just like that? Just like that. Huh. Well, that's good. Hey, pull over real quick. Bathroom break already? No, I want to show you something. See that sign? Our faces are going to be on it someday. You really think we can become more famous than the inventor of the paper toilet seat cover? He put a lot of butts in seats. And when we make it to WWE, so will we. Alright, time for a road trip game. If you could face anyone who trained in Calgary in a dream match, who would it be? Isn't it a little early for road trip games? We still have like 2,000 miles to go. Come on, I'll get you started with some options. How about Bret Hart, Jake the Snake, or Rowdy Roddy Piper? That would be so cool to face a legend like that. Could you imagine?
The following. So you know when you're on a long drive to the next town and to pass the time, you start coming up with dream match scenarios? Well, these two facing each other is exactly that. These are certainly two of the top names to ever pass through the Great White North. When I'm on a long drive, I'm mostly just thinking about how grateful I am to be Byron Free at the time. Ah, uh, you know you miss me. Not a chance. Got uh -oh. the oh, oh, oh my goodness, crushing it! Big punch finds its mark. Hooked up. Oh my god, a small package driver. Here we go. Ooh, tossed with the suplex. Hooked him up. Setting up for the Bulldog. Face first. Knee drops. That was nasty. So precise. Oh my, my God, what a forearm. Right to the jaw. This is a turbulent time in Bret Hart's career. The Hitman was the hero of WWE's new generation, a multi-time WWE champion. But now Hart is seething with resentment towards WWE executives, his fellow superstars, and the WWE Universe. If Bret Hart is your opponent, you've got one thing front and center in your mind, the sharpshooter. How do you defend against that legendary submission? You have to focus on everything that leads to the sharpshooter. Brett spends a lot of time in the match working your legs and back to set up for the sharpshooter. So keep your lower body protected. He's stuck in the corner now. Bret Hart with a nice reversal. He to attack. Flatliner. With all due respect, I think we're seeing the end for Bret Hart. He won't quit, but it might be better if he did. We've seen Bret Hart make some big comebacks before, and he'll need to do it again. Yeah, that and a miracle. Bam! Suplex! He's been quickly taking control here. That's what he does. Keep on the attack. Of course, that's a unique suplex. Wrist clutch suplex. Perfect. Set up for the side rushing leg sweep. He's in big trouble. What an exploder! Been kicked right to the gut. Oh, oh, Seals take all the wind out of you. Suplex. Wrist clutch suplex. Perfect. Big move coming. Oh my, down with authority. Got the cross face of interesting decision here, Corey. I don't know. I kind of like it. He clearly wants to inflict some more punishment. Oh. Bret Hart with a nice reversal. Got the leg. Bang and screw. That'll tear your knee up. Here we go for the win. How does he keep doing this? Wow. I thought for sure that was it. You have to imagine we're hitting the late stages of this matchup. Who's going to dig deeper at this point? It might just take that extra push, that extra inch further to create the difference. Hooked him up. Attacking the core now. Yeah, without your core, Michael, you are essentially useless. Oh my goodness, crushing it! 
Guys, Bret Hart taking full advantage. That's why you're the best analyst in the game, Corey. Check out Bret Hart's offense. And he goes for the pin. is your winner. Let's look back at the clinic, the excellence of execution just put on. Here is your winner, Rick the Hitman. Hart. Took it to another level to gain that win. The Hitman excellently executed his opponent on this night. What a great match we just saw here on Raw. Thank you to everybody at home for choosing to spend part of your Monday night with us.